hi guys yeah, welcome back to my channel on today's tutorial i'll be showing you how i recreated this beautiful dress you are seeing on the thumbnail for my client please make sure you watch to the end and don't skip any part so that you won't miss any important information if this is your first time coming across my channel please make sure you subscribe like and share my video also turn on your notification bell so you get notified once i upload a new video okay this is the sequence fabric i'll be using for this tutorial i have three yards here and for the satin i have three and a half yards i'll be using the satin for the cape and for the lining i'll be drafting on a paper for the purpose of clarity after drafting i will transfer it to my fabric okay this is my pattern paper and i'm gonna head to mark out my vertical line from my shoulder to the chest line is 8.5 from shoulder to bust point is 10 inches from shoulder to underbust is 13.5 from shoulder to half length is 15.5 inches the next thing i will do now is to mark her shoulder width half of her shoulder width is 7.5 inches i will also place it on the chest line and i will rule a straight line to connect it the next thing I will be doing now is to mark her neck width. The next style for this dress is Keno neck. So I will mark 4.5 for the neck width. And for the neck depth, I will mark 5 inches. Whatever I use for my front neck width and neck depth is what I will use for my back neck width and neck depth. Please take note of that. After that, I will connect it like a Keno neck just watch what i'm doing i'll make my square so i'll connect it this way after covering it this way the next thing i'll be doing now is to mark a shoulder slant i use one inch and i'll connect it to the neck width after that i will divide her chest line depth by two i'll get the midpoint on the midpoint i'll come in by 0.75 this will enable me to curve my armhole i'll first of all make a straight line after that i will divide her round balls by four i will place what i got on her chest line after that i will connect it i'll connect my armhole i will put her body measurement on the screen so that you understand what i'm doing so the next thing now is to divide her round waist by four I will mark the value I got and I will add one inch for that intake and I will connect it to the chest line the way you see me doing. After connecting it, I will mark an apple to nipple measurement which is four inches. I will mark it and I will rule a straight line up to her boss point. After that, the next thing I will do now is to divide i show that this way i'll get the midpoint remember that we are making a shoulder princess that bust here so i got one and a half when i divided it i'll be adding extra half inch to make it two inches this is because of the that intake that we are going to be taking on the shoulder so after that i will connect it to the bust point but i'll come up by half inch from the bust point line to connect my line the way you see me doing can you see the shape that i have so the next thing now i'll be doing is to take my dart on the half length of my waistline i'll take half half inch on the both side so that's the one inch i replaced when i was marking her round waist measurement so i'll connect it to the boss point i came down by half inch from the boss point after that the next thing i will be doing now is to tighten her on the bust so i will be taking one one inch from the first line that's the first that line i'll be taking one one inch on the both side can you see where i place my tape from the first that line not the one that i mark for my waist that intake after that i will curve it just place your pattern master the way you see me doing i connect it to your nipple point you do the same thing on this side can you see what i'm doing after that i will 
now really straight down just connect it you can come up by 0 0.25 from this that leg and you connect it can you see what i have so the next thing now is to take my shoulder that so i will be taking one one inch on the both that lines this one one inch works for all body sizes you don't need to tighten your shoulder too much with this one one inch on the both that line the posterior will still come out well just place your pattern master the way i place mine and you connect it can you see the shape that i have so i will clean this square that i made for my neckline so that you won't get confused after cleaning it i will highlight my line to make it more visible this is the part that i'll be cutting out you can shade it if you want so the next thing i'll do now is to mark what i have here and i will replace it half two inches i will replace it here so that i will not run shortage of fabric on the shoulder so i will mark my two inches i will connect my shoulder slant to the two inches i marked after connecting it i will reconnect the armhole i'll reconnect it the way you see me doing if you are watch up to this length and you have not subscribed to my channel please subscribe to my channel and turn on your notification bell the next thing i'll be doing now is to cut it out so that i can show you how you can draft the back part after cutting it out this is what you have i will confirm what i have on the shoulder before i divided it can you see i have three inches so had it been i did not replace the dart and take i would have run shortage of fabric so the next thing now is to cut the back part i've marked my basic line the same way i did on the front part the neckline for the front and back is the same thing you can alter the neckline that is totally up to you i mark two inches for my zipper allowance so to remove my zipper board i will mark 0 0.75 this way and i will slant it the way you see me doing this is to make the zip to relax very well when i fix my zipper so i will also use shoulder that on the back I divided my shoulder into two and I connected it to my boss point the way you see me doing. After that, I will now cut everything out. The back part is actually simple. You just need to mark your nipple to nipple point, which is four inches. Take your zipper allowance. I did not add any sewing allowance on this pattern. I will be adding it on my fabric the next thing i'll be doing now is to show you how i transfer all my pattern paper to my fabric so i'm gonna head to cut out the lower part of this dress i'll be uploading the video for the lower part after this one after cutting the lower part of this dress i was left with little fabric to manage my fabric i will be placing my pattern paper on my satin to cut it out i just fold it into two I'll place one part of the front on it and I'll show you how I added my sewing allowance. I'll be adding half half inch on this side. The half half inch I will be using to join it with the other one. If I get to my underbar, I will rule a straight line and I will continue marking the half half inch. I will not be adding any other sewing allowance on the ample side. On this side front, I'll be adding three inches. These three inches will compensate for all the dart intake i took when i was drafting this pattern you add three inches to be on a safer side so i will connect it this way and i will cut it out remember i told you i'll be using my satin as my lining so i will cut out two i will cut another one for this my side front so i will go ahead now and place all my pattern pieces both for the front and back on my satin and cut the one I will use to laminate my lace and the one I will use for my lining. So I will go ahead now and do it 
off camera and come back and show you this is what i have when i was done can you see i have my back here i've added my sewing allowance so did not add any other sewing allowance on the zipper side before i laminate my lace on my satin i will iron my st on my satin so i will use one part of my back now to show you because i've done for other ones this is my satin i have ironed my st on it so i will place my lace on the satin and i will use my gum this is b7000 so i will use it to tap on the satin just at the tip the way you see me doing you can use your hemi gum for this but i prefer this one and you use your hand to press it down this is the ones that i have done can you see they have stayed together just watch what i'm doing you get it right can you see what i'm doing so after that i will do the same thing for all the pieces this is what i have for the satin that i will use for my line i iron my tissue gum stay that is soft gum stay on it this is what i have when i was done so the next thing i will do now is to cut my padding you can decide not to pad it but i think the one on my thumbnail was padded so i place my one of my side front this way and from my underboss i came up by seven inches and i fold it this way to cut it out just place it the way you see me doing let the foam rest on your underboss so i will measure five inches for the width of the foam and i will curve it the way you see me doing i will place it back to dress it out can you see what i'm doing after that the next thing i will do now is to cut it out after that i will dress the remaining parts off after cutting it out i will notch it on this part that i will be joining with the center front can you see let me just place it now for you to see what i mean this is what you will have so i will curve this part a little bit i'll do the same thing on the other side so the next thing now is to cut the center front i'll place my center front this way i'll let the foam rest on the underboss i'll come up by seven inches the same thing i did on the side front you mark it and i will trace it out so if you like you can curve it this way but i want to make a full pattern so i'm not covering it out so i'll leave it this way i will set it aside now and show you the next thing to do this is my lining i've ironed my soft comb stay on it just to stabilize it so the next thing now is to iron my pattern on my main dress i'll place it this way and i will insert my hemming comb inside and use my hot iron to press it down so that it can stick together can you see what i'm doing so just place it under it and iron it out after ironing it you turn it to the right side and iron it make sure you make sure you regulate your iron before you press it on your lace fabric so it have stick together i've done the same thing on all of them so the next thing now is to join it i'll place it together make sure that it align just place the underboard make sure the underboard matches you use your pin to hold it down after pinning it down i will mark it with my chalk mark your half inch and follow the line and stitch can you see the way i marked it if you can join present that bustier or any bustier at all this will be very very easy for you so i will go to my sewing machine and join all the pieces both for the front and back i'll also do the same thing on my lining i'll do it and come back and show you okay this is what i have when i was done just follow the line that you mark and stitch can you see what i have so i will push it to the right side now after pushing it out i will use my tailor's arm to iron it out so that the posterior will come out very well but before then you notch your under bust after notching your underboss, you open it out. Just watch what I'm doing, you get it right. Open, press the seam, and use your steam iron to iron it very well. 
you do the same thing for your lining both for front and back also iron the right side of the fabric just spread it out can you see what i'm doing you iron it properly this is what you have it's coming out already i also iron the under bust i'm taking my time to show you how i ironed it because if you don't iron it very well the booster will not come at well after ironing it this is what i have i'll also do the same thing on my lining both for my back parts can you see what i have so the next thing now i will do is to join the lower parts after joining the main fabric separately i'll also join the lining separately and i will use the lining to turn the main fabric can you see what i have i use my hemming gum to turn the neckline i will notch the neckline around after notching it i will turn it to the right side i also do the same thing for the back part can you see what i have this is my front part and this is my back so before i cut my cape now what i will do is to join the shoulder you go and join the shoulder first before you cut out your cape so after joining the shoulder this way i will open it up can you see so i will measure the length of my cape so as you can see the picture on the thumbnail the cape stop at the half length i have 15.5 for my half length the same thing for the back so i have 31 inches for the total length of the cape can you see for the cape there are so many methods you can use to cut out the cape you can use half circle flay to cut out your cape for me i'll be using another method because i don't have enough certain fabric with this method i'm about to show you it will still give you the same thing if you don't want to use this method you can use half circle flay half circle flay is 180 degrees flay you can do whatever you want so what i will do now is that i will fold it into two the way you see me doing after folding it into two i will determine the starting point after marking down my two inches i will measure the length of the cape that is 31 divided by two half 15.5 so i will come down by one inch from that angle and i will curve it please not to the one inch just watch what i'm doing you can use your french cut or pattern master as a guide can you see what i'm doing it's like a canoe can you see how i draw it so the next thing i will do now is to measure the width of the cape for the smaller one i use three inches plus one inch for sewing allowance that is total of four inches i will curve it to that one inch i measured down okay i've connected it can you see what i have what i did is that i reduced the width of the cape from four inches to 3.5 you can measure 6 inches to start your 3.5. That's how you will reduce the cave to the 1 inch. So after that, I will cut it out. After cutting it out, I will cut another one. I'm cutting 4 in total. 2 for one sleeve and 2 for the other sleeve. I'll fold it this way to notch the middle. The part I will be attaching on the main dress. I'll be using the same material as lining so you cut four two for one sleeve and two for the other sleeve i will cut the remaining sleeve off camera and i will come back and show you how you can cut the bigger sleeve for the bigger sleeve i'll first of all measure the length i have 15.5 and i will use the width of five inches plus one inch so in allowance that is six inches in total you also reduce the width so i will measure six inches as a guide so from that six inches i'll start reducing it by 5.5 i'll reduce it to four 3.5 to one inch the same thing i did on the smaller one after that i will curve it just follow what i'm doing you'll get it right can you see what i'm doing i'll confirm my 15.5 make sure that at the end of that 15.5 you have one inch as your width there 
after that i will cut it out after cutting it out i will cut another three making it four for the bigger cape the same thing i did on the smaller one so i've cut everything out and i've ironed my sd on the one that i will use for the main piece and the one for the lining i use soft gum stay for the smaller cape i have two for the lining and two for the main fabric the next thing now is to sew it so i will grab the one i iron my sd and the one i iron my soft gum stay i'll place it together to give the cape a structure i use this my cream on it i came down by three inches and i place it this way i will stitch with half inch before you place your cream on it you trim it off a little bit so i will turn it to the right side now can you see what i have you iron it out so as you can see the part i iron my sd on is very smooth and neat can you see my sd and the part i use my soft concept is a kind of rough that's why you, you need to use sd to achieve a neat finishing so i'll place the smaller one and the bigger one together this way before you place it make sure you use your aiming gum to iron your clean on it down so that it can stay in place use your aiming gum please before you stitch it down after ironing your aiming gum on it it will lay flat you now join the two together stitch on it after stitching on it this is what you have can you see the neat finishing there so the next thing i will do now is to attach it on the main dress remember that you turn your fabric with your lining before you attach it you spread it out this way and you use your pin you can start from the shoulder anyway make sure that the length of your cape is very accurate so that you don't have excess can you see the way i place it you stitch it down with half inch the clean on it is what we made the cape to have that wavy effect that's the reason for the clean on it so you notch the middle of the cape you place the cape on the dart line just follow the dart line use your pin to hold it and you sew after sewing it will fall down this way i use my manual machine to sew it and i change my needle to size 21 so that it can pass through the form i use for my pattern so after pinning it down this way you sew with half inch i'll sew it and come back and show you what you will have so i'm done sewing it for the two cape can you see what i have i will spread it out now for you to see what i did so for this part now i'll be tacking it down with my hand needle i'll show you how to do that later so for the shoulder i give a space of one inch on the two shoulder before i place the cape on this side i give a space of one inch too measure it to confirm on this side i give a space of one inch too you can weave your cape before you attach it so i will turn the dress to the wrong side and so that i can shape it can you see what i have can you see the stitch line so the next thing now is to match it together after matching it together i will use my size seam sewing allowance to shape the dress so i will do that off camera now and come back and show you the next thing that you will do so i'm done shaping the dress what i was doing here is that i was tacking it down just carefully tack it down can you see the one that i have not tacked you place it together and neatly tack it down i've done this can you see after sewing it you can tie it so that it will not lose you also do the same thing for the back part for my sleeve i'll just show you how i achieve the band what you do after cutting your sleeve you now cut out a strap of fabric you place it this way and you fold it a little and stitch it down that's what you do on your sleeve that's how i achieve this neat finishing thanks for watching